so I guess I'm sort of at the beginning of my journey with the whole ferret mm-hmm. thing. Um, when I was uh, studying uh, vet nurse training, um, I'd always be really excited when some ferret came up or if any ferrets came into the practice, I'd be like right on it, you know, like the vet would come out, who wants to help me with this ferret? And I'd turn around and there'd be like nurses hiding in the, the store, coom, store cupboard, pretending to be a sharp spin, like anything to sort of not have to help with this ferret and I'd be straight in there. Yeah. Um, but when you're studying, I guess it's like you're always studying for the next exam, the next assignment. There's no real space to study on something that you're really interested in. So as soon as I qualified, I was like, right, that's it. I'm just going to devote all my sort of spare time into um, researching ferrets because uh, it was quite apparent that there was a lack of confidence with ferrets when they came into the workplace. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I kind of wanted to sort of change that, I guess, a, a little bit. Um, you know, we had one ferret came in that was a stray and um, we were putting it on Facebook as anyone lost this ferret and one of the nurses said oh it's a female ferret she was like all right okay so I went and had a look at it and I was like no this is a male ferret and she was like it's not it's female I said no that's not it's belly button and I just thought like I don't know do we do we know so like do we not know so much about ferrets um and uh when my when my ferret had to come in uh he was lame so we we brought him in for x-rays and sort of no one really knew what to do you know it was a bit like what what do we do with this ferret? How, do we gas him down? Do we inject, do we use injectables? And it was kind of like, mm. a, you know, looking through books, who do we ask? And, um, and the, it was a, a low convert we had on at the time and his words, it's something that really stuck out to me. He, when we were doing it, I was like, Oh, please look after him. He's my baby. You know, mm. I was like, Oh, it's just a ferret. And I was like, just a ferret. And those words sort of, I don't know, they really stuck with me because sometimes when, small furries present to our practice there is a little sometimes a little bit of an attitude of it's just a rabbit it's just a ferret because they're not a dog or a cat maybe people might think these bonds aren't as strong with these small furries but one of the first things we learn in our course is about being you know empathy with the owners Mm. and the human Mm. animal bond and it doesn't matter if it's a fish or a dog that bond can be just as strong as it is with that dog or with another human Um, yeah yeah Absolutely, I completely, I completely agree. The, the, the degree of interaction doesn't that uh, doesn't have any bearing on on the attachment that the, the owner can have. And I've known owners to be absolutely uh, woebegone uh, to, to the point of severe depression. Yeah, when, I've um, seen grown men when, when a land snail has died. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I've seen yeah. sort of grown men in absolute in, unconsolable because their hamsters had to be put to sleep, and it, you know. It's just, um, yeah. And I guess it's, that just sparked a, a quest. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. And and when you guys contacted me to say, do you want to sort of be a guest on the show? My initial reaction was, you know, I've seen quite of your past guests. Sorry, the past guests that you've had on have been really established within their careers. And I kind of emailed back and was like, oh, I don't think I'm really the right person. I, I've only just qualified. I'm at the beginning of my journey, blah blah blah. And then you guys were like, no, no, it'd be really good. You know, come on the show. And um, I kind of thought to myself, well, I guess talking about the journey is just as important as the destination. And in veterinary, do we really have a destination? Because we're always learning, aren't we? Mm. We're, we're, we're ships tossed in the sea, aren't we? Yeah, we're, we're, there's we always move new about. things to know. And... Absolutely. Always always new ideas to, to catch yeah. your eye and make you think, oh, oh, maybe I'll learn more about that. So yeah. I'm, I'm just wondering what the slogan should be for the, for the new campaign to be. Not uh, just a ferret. Not, but not just a ferret, or to, to, to ferret. stop this speciesism going on. Mm, yeah, Don't be speciesist. <laughs> yeah, and I think as well, if you think about how the care for rabbits over the years is just incredible. Um, you know, we've got the RWAF mm. now. Where, yep. I mean, I've just done all the paperwork for for our practice, so we could um, be a, a, an accredited practice. Yeah, mm-hmm. we've got, uh, and you know, they're great. Rabbit care has improved so much with our protocols. And then you've got, you know, the guinea pig awareness week where I've seen practices get really involved with that, which is great. And then kind of ferrets don't have anything. I mean, you can argue this for other species, you know, but it just so happens that ferrets are my passion. But I kind of, I'd love sort of at some point down the future for there to be maybe like, 
a little online hub where vets can register and be accredited, put some protocols for ferrets in, where people can go and get like drug doses or like case studies or access to very knowledgeable vets and nurses. And yeah, that's my little hmm. dream. I don't know if it'll ever, ever happen, but that's what I'd love to see. So what well, maybe, you maybe you should, maybe you should make it happen. Yeah. yeah. Well, if anyone's listening that wants to collaborate, get in touch. Because <laughs> I can't there do it go. by myself. Open, open invitation. It sounds like you can do most of it by yourself. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know. 